Hi, welcome back to Ponder Eyes. Today we will go over study questions for the talk called Our Relationship with God by Elder Christofferson. You can use these questions to ponder personally. You could go over them with your family or you could use them to teach a class. Feel free to pause as we go along if you need time to ponder. Now let's get into it. Because we know that God has power to prevent or remove any affliction, we may be tempted to complain if he does not do it. Perhaps questioning, if God does not grant the help I pray for, how can I have faith in him? So, why should we have faith in God even if he doesn't do exactly what we pray for? In his response to Job, God demands, Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Or in other words, will you even put me in the wrong? Will you condemn me that you may be justified? Jehovah forcefully reminds Job of his omnipotence and omniscience. When Job felt that God wasn't answering his prayers for help the way he wanted, God tells Job this. So what do you learn from God's response above? It truly is folly for us with our mortal myopia to presume to judge God to think, for example, I'm not happy, so God must be doing something wrong. The question is, have you ever wished that God would make things a different way? That he would remove a trial, change a commandment, or answer a prayer better? Why is it better to look within rather than to blame God? Jacob wisely cautions, seek not to counsel the Lord, but to take counsel from his hand. So what is the difference between counseling the Lord and taking his counsel? How have you been blessed by seeking his counsel? Not every blessing predicated on obedience to law is shaped, designed, and timed according to our expectations. We do our best, but must leave to him the management of blessings, both temporal and spiritual. Why does he say shaped, designed, and timed? What does he mean? And Brigham Young explained that his faith was not built on certain outcomes or blessings, but on his witness of and relationship with Jesus Christ. He said, My faith is not placed upon the Lord's working upon the islands of the sea, upon his bringing the people here, nor upon the favors he bestows upon this people or upon that people, either upon whether we are blessed or not blessed. My faith is placed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and my knowledge I have received from him. What is the difference between basing your testimony on outcomes received from God and basing it on your witness of and relationship with Christ. Which is a more sure foundation and why? Our Father is willing to guide each of us along his covenant path with steps designed to our individual need and tailored to his plan for our ultimate happiness with him. So imagine the best personal trainer or coach in the entire world. Imagine he has a detailed plan for you, how you can get better and everything even you need to do. But God is even more wise, loving, and better at helping us to grow as we do our part. So do you agree with this? Do you agree that God has a tailored plan and that, that really he wants to help us grow? And how have you noticed God's tailored plan for you? I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, the father taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So what does this analogy mean? What does this analogy have to do with our relationship with God? If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together, so in the midst of this refiner's fire, rather than get angry with God, get close to God. Call upon the Father in the name of the Son, walk with them in the Spirit day by day. Allow them over time to manifest 
their fidelity to you. Come truly to know them and truly to know yourself. Can you think of a time in your life that felt like a refining fire? What came because of it? Consider some examples of faithful men and women who trusted God, confident that his promised blessings would be upon them in life or in death. Their faith was based not on what God did or did not do in a particular circumstance or moment in time, but on knowing him as their benevolent Father and Jesus Christ as their faithful Redeemer. Why would you love God even if he didn't save you from death like you asked? Now think of something you're currently struggling with. Why would you love God even if he didn't remove that burden the way you'd like? Sister Parkinson, who is blind by age 11, said, To those who ask me if I am angry because I'm blind, I respond, Who would I be angry with? Heavenly Father is in this with me. I am not alone. He is with me all the time. What do you learn from her example? Here are some main points I wanted to highlight from this talk about having a relationship with God. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Don't blame God when things go wrong. God has a plan for us. Seek counsel from the Lord. Don't counsel the Lord. Blessings aren't a vending machine. They don't come how and when we like. Base your relationship with God on Jesus Christ, and not on blessings you do or do not receive. I think that one is really key. I didn't. I had never thought of that before. Repentance, obedience, service, and sacrifice help engage us in God's work as we transform into saints. Thanks so much for following along. I really like this talk. Share it with your friends and family. I think there's a lot we can learn from it. And please like and subscribe. Thanks.